Hey friends, welcome back to Acre Homestead. We are in my garage today. My name is Becky, if you're new around here. And I have two deep freezers out in my garage and I need to organize them. I was out here because I was gonna pull a bunch of meat out because I wanna show you what it's like to buy a whole hog. I had just purchased a whole hog. And my deep freezers are a disaster. I don't know about you, but deep freezers can be pretty tricky to keep organized. And I do have a way I like to keep them organized, but between harvest season, buying the whole hog, doing the freezer meals, they've just gotten really bad and I haven't had a chance to organize them. When I came out here to pull out the meat, I was like, I'm gonna start organizing them now so I can show you that haul. But then my garage is kind of a mess and it was getting overwhelming. So I figured I'm gonna clean my garage too at the same time. And I figured let's just do it together because I'm gonna show you how I organize my deep freezer. I'm sure there's better ways, but this way has worked for me in the past. And I just got something new. My mom gave me these. They are hard sided bags that we are going to use to help organize these deep freezers. I have done this in the past with the with the really flimsy bags, but these are in my freezers right now and because they're so full right now, they're not very functional. So I think we can do a better job. The reason I have deep freezers and not stand up freezers is because I have a lot invested in my freezers between buying meat in bulk and all the stuff that comes out of my garden. So I just trust a deep freezer better that the lid is going to close than I do a stand-up freezer. Growing up a couple times we've had that freezer door left open and because I have such a high investment of meat and produce in my freezers I just trust a deep freezer better but they come with their challenges of being very difficult to keep organized and right now mine look terrible and I'm going to show you what they look like and we are going to improve that together. At the same time while I'm doing this I'm going to go ahead and just do an inventory of everything I have in my deep freezers because in January, I'm gonna be doing a pantry challenge with Three Rivers Homestead, and I'm not gonna be going to the grocery store, I think, for two months. I'm not exactly sure what rules I'm gonna follow yet, but I need to know what's in my freezers so that I know what I can meal plan and things like that moving forward with this pantry challenge. My husband and I are gonna be doing this garage organizational together, but he's gonna be coming tonight after work and he's gonna be organizing his technical stuff, the stuff that I don't really know what to do or what to touch, so I'm gonna let him do that. What my goal for my two freezers is, is this freezer over here, I want it to be my produce and freezer meal freezer. And this freezer right here, I want it to be for meat. I kind of want to start keeping those two things separate so that when I come out here and I need a specific thing, I don't have to go digging between each freezer. Also, this freezer came with our house. It's a pretty old freezer and I don't trust it necessarily as much as I trust this freezer. This freezer is about five years old, maybe six years old, and we purchased it. So I'd rather have my meat, my higher investment, in my more reliable freezer. Currently, this freezer has a ton of stuff going on in it. It has down here, at the bottom, there's a ton of beef. There's about six freezer meals in here. There's a bunch of random chicken. There's a bunch of pork. There's produce from the garden. There's lamb. And we can do better than this. I want to get this half a hog out of here first. That's going to be my first goal. So I can show you what it looks like to purchase a whole hog. And we haven't eaten any of it yet because I want to show you what it's like to buy a whole hog and I just haven't had a chance to do that. So we are going to do that today. This box is filled with it and then I have one of these containers. I got these at my local grocery store. If I can find something similar online, I will look and I'll link it if I can. I'm not sure if I can. But they're high sided stiff bags and I really like them. I think this is going to be a really good asset in organizing a deep freezer. I brought gloves because this is going to get cold moving all this frozen stuff. That is all the pork from this freezer. So let's head over to the other one and get all that pork out. I am focusing on getting all the pork out, but while I'm here, if I'm touching something, I'm gonna start organizing it instead of picking it up twice. This is a bunch of the marinated chicken that I made in the last freezer video, and I'm gonna put that in this container here. This is probably gonna end up going in my inside freezer, because I do have a fridge freezer in my walk-in pantry, but I'm not exactly sure yet. So for now, I'm just gonna condense it all into one spot.
whenever I do a big organizational project or not even big, I guess, just whenever I try to organize something, whether it be a junk drawer, pantry, freezer, cupboard, closet, what I tend to find myself doing is taking everything out of that space, trying to group like things with like things as I take them out. And then I organize kind of as I put things back into the space. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm basically taking almost everything out of the freezer before I then put it back into the freezer. This is where we are at right now. I've got all the pork out and it's definitely gonna look worse before it looks better. The next thing I wanna do is put all the meat together. This is ButcherBox meat. I am super happy with the quality of ButcherBox. I'm gonna leave a link down in the description box. They do grass-fed, grass-finished beef and organic chicken and crate-free pork. And I'm super happy with the quality. So I'll leave a link for a discount down in the description box. But I wanna get all my meat organized in containers together. And I wanna start getting all the produce in containers that are the same so that we can get those organized as well. Now that I have all the pork out, I'm gonna go inside. I'm gonna do a whole pork haul so you can see exactly what buying a whole hog looks like. And then we'll come out and we'll finish organizing all these freezers. The hog haul video is gonna be its own video. So if you're interested in seeing exactly what we got for a whole hog, then I will link that video down in the description box. In that video, I talk about what it's like and how it's like to buy a whole hog from a local rancher, the difference in having to give your cutting instructions to the butcher, and the cost breakdown. So I go over exactly how much I paid in order to order an entire hog from a local rancher in my area. Now what I'm doing is I'm taking my totes and I'm opening them up so as I take things out of the freezer, I can just put them directly into a tote. This project did take me a little bit longer than I was expecting, so I'm seriously trying to only touch things one time if at all possible. Right here I am organizing meat. I had purchased I think 40 pounds of meat from a local meat processing plant in my area, but I probably am not going to do that again because the price had doubled since the time before I had ordered. And I'm considering actually canning some of this meat. I've never canned meat before. So let me know if you guys have and what you think of it. I'm a little bit nervous about the texture of the meat. We also need to invest in a generator because we do not own a generator. And I have a lot of meat invested in these freezers and produce. So if the power goes out, I wouldn't want to lose all of this stuff. So if you have any generator recommendations, I'd greatly appreciate that as well. I just emptied this part of this inside freezer. I'm gonna put my marinated meats down here. I brought these in. Having homemade marinades in the freezer has been a life changer for me. I don't have to think about getting all the ingredients out to marinate something the day of or the morning before or anything like that. I can just pull it out of the freezer and as it thaws, it sits in its own marinade and it's just super convenient to have to only get those ingredients out one time, make a mess one time, and then it's ready for me whenever I want it. This is what I've done. I took my marinated meats and I put them down here. Here are some frozen rolls I made earlier, so I can pull those out and have some fresh rolls whenever I want. And up here, I put a little bit of all the vegetables that I have in the outside freezer so that it would be easy access. I have some homegrown pumpkin, broccoli, peas, some homegrown corn, peppers, spinach, green beans, and some frozen sweet potato fries. In the door, I have my homemade onion top pesto, a couple of cream cheeses that are frozen, and just some pineapple juice. I'm really happy with how this turned out. I'll be able to throw together a quick meal just by grabbing some meat, some veggies, and moving on with my day. So this is good. I'm glad I got this taken care of. We still have a lot of work to do in this outside area, but one freezer done. Out here, I'm still working. I've got all the meat here. This is all the pork. It needs to find a home. Here, what I'm doing is I'm putting the vegetables together. This is basically all peppers with some pumpkin. This right here is zucchini and corn. In here, we have, I don't know yet. <laughs> we gotta figure this out. But I've got, so this is what it's looking like now. We got a couple turkeys in here. We have a ton of green tomatoes. I'm gonna take these out and I'm gonna give these to the chickens because those are from 2020's garden and if they're at the bottom of the freezer, I'm not gonna eat them. I have just a couple more things to take out of here and then we're gonna start adding stuff back in.
Well, friends, we did it. We got both freezers and the inside freezer completely organized. I'm going to walk you through why I did what I did and how I organized everything. For me, this is going to work really well. If you guys have suggestions on how you organize your deep freezers, because I know they can kind of be complicated a little bit, then please leave them down in the description box. But for me now, this is going to be a way better situation than what I had before. So come along, let's get into this freezer and I'll show you what I did. So first I'm going to show you my meat freezer. This is mostly just meat in here. And I wanted to get all my meat in this one freezer while well, I wasn't able to do that. And over here I have my ground beef and steaks. There's a bunch of different steaks in here. So what I have in this tote is my bratwurst. I tried to put some of the lighter things in those totes so they would be easy to pick up and out. Underneath those top totes here, I have a whole entire tote that I'm going to be freeze drying. This is all dog treats. Here are dog bones. I'm not going to freeze dry these, but I put them in here because this is all dog stuff. I have probably six of these beef liver packages. I'm going to freeze dry these for dog treats for my dogs. I have a beef heart I'm going to freeze dry. Here's some more liver. This is pork liver. That liver that I'm going to freeze dry for my dogs, I might grind some of it up and put into capsules for supplements for Josh and I. I'm not exactly sure. I know liver is supposed to be really good for you, but I just can't eat it. I don't like it. So I used to buy my dog growing up these freeze dried liver treats and he went crazy for them. So since I have my freeze dryer, I thought that, that would be a really fun treat for my dogs now. I might do some for us as well. Let me know if that's a crazy idea. This is ground beef down here. I know it's down here, but I wanted some on the top layer so that it'd be easy to access. This is all the ground beef I have left. I think I counted 25 of those. This entire tote right here are all pork roasts. We have pork butt and pork loin roasts. And those are from the hog that I just purchased. And then this is one from Butcher Box. And I just put those all together. Moving over here, these are all beef roasts that I have. So if I buy another half a hog sometime soon, I'm probably set on beef roast. These are chuck roast. This is a tenderloin roast. Here, right here, is a prime rib roast. I have two of these prime rib roasts. These are actually what we're gonna have for Christmas. I'm gonna bring these over to my mom's house and we're gonna eat those for Christmas. From here down, there's four of these big packages. These are beef tallow. I'm gonna render these for my sister-in-law. These are actually from the cow she purchased and I just haven't had time, so probably after Christmas, that's gonna be a project we're gonna do together. This entire package right here, there is 16 packages of bacon, and I know what that is, so that entire tote is just filled with bacon. Moving over from the bacon, this tote is filled with pork ribs and pork tenderloin, and this is just a pretty light one, and it's easy to move. Underneath that tote, I have my four hams that I purchased from the whole hog that I got, and those are under there, and I know that's there. This over here, obviously some pot stickers that I got from Costco, and that is some lamb and some pork from a pork I bought a little while ago. I bought a whole lamb, and I'm honestly not a big fan of lamb, and we need to go through this. I'm gonna be doing a pantry challenge in the beginning of 2022, and I'm not gonna be going to the grocery store for probably six weeks to two months, so I'm gonna be working on trying to go through some of that lamb because my husband likes it, I'm just not a huge fan of it. So now I'm gonna get this package back up and we'll go to the other freezer. Let's dive into this one. This is mostly produce from the garden. I kind of did the same concept here where I used these totes and I tried to layer like things on like things. So right here, this is two totes tall. The bottom one is filled with chicken breasts and the top one is filled with chicken thighs and chicken breasts. I wanted the chicken to be stacked on top of each other so I could access this easily and then when this is done, I can access that down there. Over here, I have two packages of rice cauliflower from Costco. And down here, I have a ton of peppers. These are some peppers I bought from a local farmer and some homegrown peppers. These big Ziploc bags here are all greens from the garden. And that's what that is. 
And this whole tote that's on top are all greens from the garden. This is super light and easy to move. And that's why I wanted to fill it all with different types of greens. This is spinach, this is kale. This is actually celery. This is the only celery I have left from the garden. But there's all types of greens in here. There's onion tops, mostly kale, mostly spinach in this top tote. Really light, really easy to move. And that's why I put it right there. Over here in this tote, this is actually something that I need to deal with soon. This here is peach skins and peach pits that I need to make peach jelly out of. I didn't have time when I canned my peaches. And then I have two packages of these plums, which definitely need to be used, which I'm grateful for this harvest because I think my plum tree died and I think this is the last plums I'm gonna be getting from my plum tree. So I have two of these one gallon Ziploc bags in this black tote. The reason I love organizing with these totes is I can just pick it up and move it over and that makes it really simple. If they're individually in there, they slide all around and they're harder to keep organized. This tote here has all green beans. These are all green beans from the garden. We might actually eat some of these for dinner tonight. And again, it's in a tote. I can just lift that tote out, set it right here, and then I can access the milk. This is all milk that I froze. I like to buy organic milk and it can be kind of spendy. So anytime I see it on sale, I buy quite a few of them and I stick them in the freezer. Milk freezes really well. The way I thought is I just take it out of the freezer, I stick it on the counter and I let it thaw overnight on the counter. And when I wake up, it's still probably two thirds frozen. And then I stick it in the fridge and it thaws beautifully. It doesn't get weird. The texture stays the same. At least I found with freezing whole milk. So that's the way I like to save money on organic milk. This tote here is all corn from the garden, onions from the garden, and zucchini from the garden. I love shredding zucchini and freezing it. I will seriously put shredded zucchini in almost any dish, curries, meatballs, anything. It's just a great way to bulk up a dish and add a little bit more nutrients. So underneath this tote, this tote is all peppers from a local farmer and from my garden. These are plobano peppers that I grew. Then there's just some chopped peppers. I love buying from a local farmer in my area peppers. Organic peppers are really expensive in my area to buy at the grocery store. And they're part of the Dirty Dozen. There's a whole list of, if you're gonna buy organic, these are the ones that you should buy organic. And if you're not gonna buy organic, these are the safer ones. Well, peppers are one of the ones that have the highest pesticides rate on it. And so they definitely recommend if you're gonna buy organic, that's something you should invest in buying organic. But they're expensive. So every summer I buy a ton of peppers from a local rancher. I chop them up and I put them in the freezer and they freeze beautifully. Obviously, if you thaw them, you're not gonna wanna eat them fresh like you would eat a raw pepper. I love frozen peppers and cooked things. I can't tell a difference. Because that bottom one is all peppers and it's gonna be harder to access because the corn and zucchini are on it, that is why I also put some peppers right here underneath the greens because it's a lot easier to access. This tote with the greens is a lot lighter to lift than that one. So over here, I have all my freezer meals. When I stack my freezer meals like this, the way I like to do it is try to have a variety of them stacked on top of each other. I don't like to put all of them right next to each other. That way, if I want something and it's all the way at the bottom, I don't have to dig all the way at the bottom. And so I like to just have a variety because typically when I do all these freezer meals, what I do on Sunday or so, I'll take two of them out, stick them in the refrigerator and let them thaw, and then I'll cook two during the week. Underneath this stack of freezer meals, there's a turkey here and a turkey there. So two turkeys. When turkeys are on sale during this time of year, what I like to do, especially if there's those deals where you spend $100 at the grocery store and you get a free turkey, I typically like to stock up on one or two or three turkeys and I just keep those in the freezer and I'll cook those up and then I'll use that turkey meat in any dish. Any dish you would put cooked chicken in, I'll put turkey, and it's a way to kind of reduce the grocery budget. And that is one thing that I've been doing for the last few years. And I've already cooked up two turkeys this year. You can use it in anything like white chicken chili. You could use turkey, obviously turkey soup. I put it in enchiladas. Basically anything you would put cooked chicken in, you can put turkey in. And so if I can get a free turkey, you know, 20 pounds of meat or 15 pounds of meat, why not? So one way I like to reduce my grocery budget I hope you found this freezer organizational video and tour helpful. I didn't get to organize the rest of my garage like I wanted to. I got it kind of tidied up, swept, but tomorrow I'm gonna come back out here and finish organizing the garage. I've really found this totes to be a game changer for me and I really like these thick sided ones my mom found for me. So like I said, if I can find these, um, online or something because these are just for my local grocery store. I'll link them down below. If you guys have any suggestions on how you guys organize your deep freeze, please leave them down in the comment section so we can learn together because this can be a struggle. I really do only use these chest freezers because 
I cannot afford to lose all of this meat and produce that I grew because the door was left open and just because I've grown up and that's happened before I know it's a possibility and I know my personality and my personality is not always the most detail oriented about those types of things you know I'm, I typically am thinking a step or two ahead and so I just need to make sure I use a chest freezer just because of that so if you guys found this video helpful please consider giving it a thumbs up if you know anyone that would enjoy this video please consider sharing it with them if you're new around here please consider subscribing I do have some videos right here you can go watch me actually cook all those freezer meals I can link them right here and you can go watch those if you're interested in that I hope you guys are having a great day and I'll see you next time bye guys